Coming up today on WABJ News, has the media fairly handled the Trayvon Martin story? And the reopening of the legendary Washington Theater revives a the neighborhood. All that and more today on WABJ News. Hello, I'm Tamina Cheksai. And I'm Abby Duger, and welcome to WABJ News, brought to you by the Washington Association of Black Journalists. We start this D.C. area's largest industry, the government, and politics. This is a big year with the 2012 elections just months away. And in what's expected to be a tight presidential race, young voters may have a big impact on the outcome. WABJ's Shantae Hayes talked to students at American University about politics. Shantae, what kind of feedback did you get? Well, Tamina, as you mentioned, young people did make a big difference in the last election when Senator Barack Obama first ran for president. However, this year, students don't seem to be as excited about the election and have mixed opinions on the importance of voting. Would this be your first, would it have been your first time voting? Yes, it would have been. And I was very excited to vote, but then I realized polit politics was just a game, so. Why do you find it important to go out and vote? Um. I guess I really don't think it's important. I just, I guess it's kind of out of democratic duty, even though I know my vote doesn't really matter. You have more of a chance of winning the, winning the lottery than having your vote matter in an election. Then you said this is your first time voting. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about it? Like, it's so cool. I'm so excited. I'm like really happy that I get to vote because I've been really, really wanting to vote for a really long time. And I come from a very politically, not active but very aware family and you know it, voting is a very it's kind of like a rite of passage in my house so I'm really excited. Students will no doubt have more to say about the upcoming elections as we get closer to November but right now even experts agree that turnout numbers will be lower than 2008. Of course that was an unscientific poll but do you think those three opinions were pretty representative? Yes, I think they were pretty representative, but it was a little, I was a little surprised at the lack of interest, especially compared to 2008. The shooting of an unarmed teen in Sanford, Florida touched off a flood of emotion across the country and even around the world. WABJ's Marhisha Mercado looks into how the media has handled the story. The name Trayvon Martin is now known in most American households, thanks to social networks and media outlets. This story was mostly unknown until, after a push from the Martin family, it emerged on Twitter and Facebook. It was then picked up by media outlets. Since then, the case has received attention from everyday people to celebrities and well-known journalists to civil rights activists. The only reason I got involved is the family asked me to get involved, and we didn't even hear the case. We helped make the case become known. Then they asked, why are we in the case? question is, why didn't they have the case handled or we would have never had to get involved? Some even believe that the media has convicted Zimmerman before the case went to court. In a way, I feel like we are trying George Zimmerman in the media instead of a court system where it really needs to happen. And the focus of what a lot of people are saying in the media is very um, racially driven, but at the end of the day, whether Trayvon Martin was black, white, or whatever, it was just the fact that it's an injustice. Whatever the opinion, the case has hit a nerve with the American public. The reason I think the people mobilize is because people are feeling this all over the country. We all have experienced some Trayvon type situation. Some nephew followed in a store just because of the way he looked. Somebody pulled over on a highway. And the fact that this guy did it and wasn't even law enforcement. With the trial approaching, many wonder about the overall effect of media coverage on the case and whether it will influence the outcome. This is Marhisha Maldonado, WABJ News. Most times in D.C., one of the easiest ways to avoid traffic and get around the D.C. region is to take the metro trains, and, and the transit agency is working to improve its system. But are passengers willing to pay the price for the upgrades? WABJ's John A. Campbell got riders' response to the proposals for a price hike. Riding the metro is about to get more expensive, again, and that doesn't sit well with many passengers. I would rather they didn't. I understand when they, they need the money for maintenance, but I'm afraid it'll cut down on ridership and I'd rather get people out of cars and on the trains. Because the service that I'm receiving for the price I'm paying already is not acceptable and I think they should actually lower prices now because every day they have problems and it's not, it's not benefiting myself. 
it's it's not cheap now so you know if it went up i wouldn't be a fan of that all metro fares are going up 35 cents at peak rider times bus fares will also increase metro says they need the fare hikes to pay for a budget deficit and maintenance costs riders say they're already paying for maintenance and are dealing with constant delays due to track work making commutes longer sometimes it's sluggish and it's several delays daily um, sometimes it's just best to jump in a cab or just walk to your destination. My commute on the metro is, is generally, generally good. I live in Friendship Heights. I take it often on the weekends. A lot of track maintenance on the weekends, which can be really, really annoying. You kind of have to plan an extra hour or so into your, into your travel time um, on weekends. Despite some passengers' complaints, though, Metro approved fare hikes at their last board meeting. Whatever decisions to be made will go into effect July 1st. This is John A. Campbell reporting for WABJ News. The Metro Board says the fare hikes are needed to pay for maintenance costs and cover a projected budget deficit. The last Metro fare hike was in the summer of 2010. Free money to spend in college in the form of a credit card. Hear what some college students are saying about the temptation. Also ahead, how high school students can get an all-expense paid trip to places like Europe and Asia. We're back in a moment with more WABJ News. With all the expenses of a college life, many students can begin to feel the financial pain. Those credit card offers may look tempting, but some students know all too well the dangers those cards can bring. Here's WABJ's Shante Hayes. By the time most college students graduate, they have racked up an average of more than $4,000 in credit card debt, according to Credit.com. Some students are wary of those dangers. I have no credit cards, but um, I know a couple of my friends have credit cards. Although Ashley doesn't own credit cards, she says students like her still feel the pressure by companies to get a card. I hear they try to trick you into getting one, like they'll be like, oh yeah, come on and get this free thing, but you got to sign up for the credit card, but you just have to have, to have enough knowledge to know that you can't pay back the credit card. So. In the past, credit card companies would have tables set up offering students credit cards. Now laws prevent this, and there are limits set up that control company access to students on campus. Some students get along without credit cards and offer a little advice. Live below your means. Live below your means. If you're making $10,000, you should be living like you're only making $1,000, you know. Because <laughs> I think like, the misconception is, you know, I'm going to get a credit card so that I can buy something because I don't have the money and I can use credit. But really, I think, again, you need to be smart about your credit, your purchases. So I would say don't spend the money if you don't have it. Shante Hayes, WABJ. Thousands of dollars can go into a trip to study abroad, but there is a way to for students to travel abroad for free. WABJ's Marugi Thonde discovered a way for high school students to travel overseas. I'm here at Dulles International Airport where you will find more students coming to embark on their international adventures abroad. Studying abroad is no longer just a college experience. Now high school students are getting in on the fun. I'm so excited just to meet my host family, like meet the friends and like be in a country where I don't know anyone but just have to figure it out. What are you most looking forward to? I'm not kidding. That's a different question. Just the immersion, the language immersion, the cultural immersion, just the, the perspective change, the point of view change, just, it's just exciting. <laughs> Organizations such as the Kennedy Luger Youth Exchange Students Abroad give full scholarships to high school students to study abroad for up to a full academic year. Every student who comes back has a much stronger sense of self. Um, they have a much stronger identity. They know what they need to thrive. Uh, they know how to be happy. Studying abroad is a life-changing experience. I definitely broadened my horizons and became a more um, internationally oriented person. And it's just amazing how much it can change. Even after two weeks in Korea, I came back different, more independent, and um, I think more, definitely someone who's more interested in like international politics too. Learning a new language, gaining independence, and improving their college applications are some reasons why high school students choose to study abroad. For WABJ News, I'm Rugi Fonde. This spring, 
D.C. is celebrating a milestone with the centennial of the annual Cherry Blossom Festival. The event marks Japan's gift of 3,000 cherry blossom trees to the U.S. WABJ's Ashley Jones Quita takes us to one of the highlights of the six-week festival, the Cherry Blossom Parade and Street Fair. Thousands gather on Constitution Avenue to watch performances by Laura Capeller, the Washington Performing Arts Society Men, Women, and Children's Gospel Choir in their vibrant and blossom-inspired costumes. I'm here with Naomi Chen from the Japanese American Fund, and she's here to talk to me today about what type of um, benefits they have for those who are in need, Japanese who are in need. Um, can you tell us what your foundation is about? Sure. The Japanese Americans Care Fund, they are um, a nonprofit organization here based in the D.C. area. They were founded in 1999, and really it was because this um, elderly Japanese woman um, bequeathed to two individuals um, some funds um, for the express purposes of, of helping the elderly Japanese. Thank you for your time, Naomi. I'm here with Roger, Elliot, and Teresa. Um, what brings you here to D.C.? Uh, we came over here to find somebody that looked like you to get a big kiss off of. The Cherry Blossom Parade, of course. Yeah, we come to visit my brother in over in Shenandoah, and then he brought us here. Hot. Lot. Beer, that beer they have over at the beer garden, and, uh, uh, you know. The parade the, was great. Parade. The, 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 all the memorials, the uh, Martin Luther King Memorial. Great. Hi, I'm Ashley Jones Quidu here at the Cherry Blossom Festival, and where many spectators and tourists have gathered to see the Cherry Blossoms today. Many people come from all over the world and all over the country to see these Cherry Blossoms, and with it being the hundredth year, it will be nationally syndicated on national television after being broadcast live. I'm Ashley Jones Quidu for Urban Journalism News. Now, let's talk sports. Jelani Scott is here with our sports wrap-up. Hi, Jelani. Hey, Abby and Tamina. Well, it's been a pretty exciting year so far for Washington sports teams and their fans. Most all the teams have made big changes in preparation for the future. The most notable, the Washington Redskins, with their drafting of star Baylor quarterback Robert Griffin III. When NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell said these faithful words at the 2012 NFL Draft, the Washington Redskins select Robert Griffin III, quarterback Baylor. The Redskins and their fans knew the team's future was looking a lot brighter. In Washington, I have a lot of confidence that this is the move that could push the Redskins back into business. During his college career, Griffin threw for more than 10,000 passing yards ran for more than 2,000 rushing yards, and he won the 2011 Heisman Trophy. Now to the Washington Caps. After right wing Joel Ward scored the winning goal in Game 7 against defending champs, the Boston Bruins, many couldn't believe the Caps were advancing. The shot left Bruins fans in dead silence. But some may have taken their emotions a little too far. After the game, some fans filled Twitter with racial slurs directed at Ward and spoiled what was supposed to be a feel-good moment for the Ontario native. Others defended him and criticized those who posted the racist remarks. To, you know, to show that it does happen. This is this part of the struggles of being a black guy um, growing up, and uh, it's unfortunate to see what still goes on. But again, I'm not surprised, so I... And that's it for WABJ Sports. Hey, thanks, Jelani. Well, it's a new era for local theater with international fame. When we return, WABJ News puts the spotlight on the Howard Theater and what its return means for a DC neighborhood. More than 30 years, the famed Howard Theatre has reopened its doors. 
In its heyday, legendary performers, including Marvin Gaye and the Supremes, graced its stage. WABJ's Abdul Johnson tells us how the theater's return is impacting DC's Shaw neighborhood. Behind me stands one of the most notable theaters in the Washington, D.C. area, James Brown, Sam Cooke, The Temptations, all performed here, and that's just to name a few of the many legends. After suffering 30 years of neglect, the Howard Theater is back and ready to once again be a part of the Washington, D.C. community. About 10 years ago, efforts began to restore the historic venue. Look at the front as you know, what uh, they've done to the front. Uh, I've been here 47 years and it never looked like this and I don't think even much when they first opened it up it never had it looked like, like this. In addition to the revamped outer exterior, it's what's inside that has the most improvement. Before it was basically you come in, there was a show, there were seats and you just sit down in your seat and wait for the show to start. Now the doors open two hours before the show where you can come in, you can enjoy a meal, you know, before the show starts. There's not a bad seat in the house. The theaters already welcome new performers like Wale, along with icons like Chuck Berry. DC's own godfather of go, go Chuck Brown, was also set to take the stage. But after his recent passing, a celebration was held in his honor. Abdul Johnson, WABJ News. What are you going to do with your summer? WABJ's entertainment reporter, Delaney Coley, is here with a few ideas. Delaney? Thanks, Abby and Tamina. Stumped on what to see this summer? Here are a few movies that are hitting the box office. The first movie is called Brave. It comes out June 22nd. This is a Disney Pixar film and is for people of all ages. It's about a princess who's trying to find her own journey through life, and she happens to be an archer. Next up is one everyone has been waiting for, The Amazing Spider-Man but it's probably better known as Spider-Man 4. This one is out just in time for the 4th of July holiday weekend. The film shows a side of the story that we have never seen before. Are your spidey senses tingling yet? And that wraps up your WABJ News Entertainment Report. Back to you, Abby and Tamina. That's it for this year's edition of WABJ News. Be sure to check out our chapter's Facebook page at Washington Association of Black Journalists. You can also follow us on Twitter at WABJDC and find us at WABJDC.org. I'm Samina Cheksai. And I'm Abby Duger. Thanks for joining us.